Welcome to the win streak preview and prediction of all 32 NFL teams for the upcoming 2017 season. Over the next few weeks, I will be covering all 32 teams, so please subscribe on YouTube or the podcast platform you're listening on so you don't miss an episode. My name is Corey Foister. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Corey Foister. Follow the show on social media. That is Twitter at Winstreak News, Facebook.com slash The Winstreak, TheWinstreak.com. Leave a review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're listening on. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is Soaring Jets Productions. Contact us at either Soaring Jets Productions at gmail.com or thewinstreak.com slash contact. Join our fantasy football league. You can find out more information about that on our Facebook page and on our official website. Top 10 Super Bowl matchups we want to see is our latest top 10 episode. And also, if this is the first time you've ever heard of The Win Streak, please check out our weekly sports wrap-up show. Me and my co-host, Brandon Myers, we have a great time talking football, basketball, hockey, baseball, soccer, college sports. Uh, it's really a great time. Hopefully, you'll laugh with us and not at us. But even if you laugh at us, at least you're having a good time. But today... I am doing my preview of the 2017 Tennessee Titans. This is Tennessee Titans' 58th season overall in the NFL, 21st season in the state of Tennessee, second full season under head coach Mike Malarkey, general manager is John Robinson, and the owner is KS KSA Industries. Titans haven't been to the playoffs since 2008, Titans went 9-7 and seven in 2016, good for second in the AFC South. Despite the winning record, the Titans failed to make the playoff. They had five Pro Bowlers in 2016. This was the Titans' first winning season since 2011. The Titans have the fifth longest playoff drought in the NFL. The Titans did tie with the Texans for the AFC South division title, but lost the tiebreaker to due to record against divisional opponent. Texans went 5-1 and one in the AFC South, but the Titans only went 2-4 and four in the AFC South. It came down to their, the losses they took over the Titans, or the Texans, were just a little bit worse. They should have lost to non-divisional opponents, and they would have made it in the, uh, the playoffs. Titans were previously known as the Houston Oilers, the Oilers won the first two AFL championships in 1960 and in 1961. They have one conference championship. 1999 came up just short of winning a Super Bowl title against the Rams, and I do mean just short. Nine division championships, last being 2008, 21 playoff appearances overall. The 2016 Tennessee Titans won five home games, four road games in 2016. My franchise what if for the Tennessee Titans, I have a few of them here. What if the Titans had drafted Randy Moss in 1998? Moss was still on the board at number 16, but they drafted Kevin Dyson of Utah instead of Randy Moss. Dyson had the ball in his hand for two iconic franchise moments. The Music City Miracle and the stretch that came up just short of the goal line and a tie on the final play of Super Bowl XXXIV. What if Dyson was able, and this really follows the same kind of what if, what if Dyson was able to stretch a little further and got that touchdown? It would be a total change for Air McNair and the Titans. It would have changed that franchise forever, but sadly that did not happen. And the Rams, the greatest show on turf, would go on to win that Super Bowl. My 2017 outlook for the Tennessee Titans. Titans lost their playoff chances and quarterback on Christmas Eve when Marcus Mariota went down with a broken ankle. Yeah, it was. If you were a Tennessee Titans fan, uh, you did not have a good Christmas. That was brutal because I actually thought that the Tennessee Titans, I was like, oh my gosh, they're actually going to make it in the playoffs. And then you just hate to see 
you know, it's already rough enough to have your team get eliminated on Christmas, but to have your star quarterback get hurt, that just, it's brutal. The fact that they were that close underscores how solidly they're built and how this franchise has been turned around. Really impressive what the general manager has been able to do with the Tennessee Titans because it was just a couple years ago, not even really a couple years ago, that the Tennessee Titans were a complete joke. Now they are no joke. They are a good team. The Titans have solidified both lines. Offensive line is among the best in the league with tackle Taylor Leward and Jack Conklin. This offseason was spent adding skill position players for Mariota, drafted wide receiver Corey Davis, fifth overall, third rounder, Taewon Taylor also has promise. I love the pickup of veteran Eric Decker late in the offseason after the Jets cut him. Uh, they're not flashy, but a solid team. They don't have a lot of big names on the team, but what they have is solid talent. Just not big household name, and there's nothing wrong with that unless you're trying to sell jerseys, but the Tennessee Titans in football, they're trying to win games here and get back in the postseason. Titans could be a sleeper team in 2017 if you could call them a sleeper because they are the trendy pick this year to be good. I think the Titans, I think the Buccaneers are another team that's going to take a big step up and make it into the playoffs. Biggest positive change for me, the Titans were forced into many shootouts last season, primarily because they were 30th in the league in pass defense. So the Titans focused on secondaries, spent heavily on cornerback Logan Ryan, and brought safety Jonathan Caprian in free agency, used second first rounder on uh, cornerback Adri, Adri Johnson. Eric Decker was also, like I said, a solid veteran pickup. I really like the signing of Eric Decker. It gives Mariota yet another target along with Corey Davis. I really like where they're where they're going here. Biggest negative change? Honestly, honestly, it's hard to find one. They lost tight end Anthony Fanasso. But that won't be a deal breaker for this team. The Titans might crumble at the high expectation and pressure that comes with it. We've seen it last year with the Carolina Panthers going 15 and 1, going all the way to the Super Bowl, only to get crushed by that Denver defense. And then they just buckled the pressure. They were supposed to go back to the playoff, maybe even go back to the Super Bowl. And they only won six games. So. Probably the Titans' biggest negative change is not being a complete sleeper team and flying under the radar. They're definitely not flying under the radar. People know that the Tennessee Titans are good. They won nine games last year. They're no team to sleep on. These are no longer the Browns of the South. Uh, the Tennessee Titans definitely, like I said, lost the ability to surprise people, getting a lot of attention and a trendy pick. AFC South is weak, but Texans will be hard to leap past for the division title. Head coach Malarkey's job is safe. I really like that head coach hiring that they did last offseason. Mariota can't take a step back. Now is the time to shine for Marcus Mariota. And I think he will. I really like Marcus Mariota. I'm a New York Jets fan, and I was hoping that the Jets would get their hands on Mariota. So I'd like to see him succeed, even though it's going to be kind of painful to think, well, what if with the Jets? Uh, Preseason schedule is as followed at New York to play the New York Jets. Uh, they lost that 7-3. to Week 2 and 3, you are at home home against the Panthers and the Bears, and you finish off the preseason at Kansas City to play the Kansas City Chiefs. My Titans regular season game-by-game -game prediction, the Titans have only two primetime games this season, which actually kind of surprised me. I figured they'd have three or four. Uh, Colts on Monday Night Football and at Pittsburgh on Thursday Night Football. As always, worst case, best case scenario, September 10th, you open up at home against the Raiders. The Raiders are really good. That's a really tough game to open up with. If anybody can upset the Raiders at home, it, 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 it's the Titans because uh, the Raiders, but the Raiders, I think, are just going to be so good 
Derek Carr, that defense, that is still a work in progress, but I like what the Raiders are doing. So I say worst case, best case scenario, you lose to the Raiders, but I say in the end, it's going to be a very close game. September 17th at Jacksonville to play the Jaguars. Worst case, best case scenario, I say you beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm not buying into Blake Bortles. I think Blake Bortles is pretty much a bust. I think we've seen enough of him to kind of label him a bust, especially if they only win five or six games again. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Bortles just is not working out in Jacksonville, and it's time to go back to the drawing board and, you know, maybe ask Tom Coughlin who he thinks the, the Jacksonville Jaguars should draft. September 24th, home for Seattle. That's another two tough teams, but at least they're playing on in Tennessee instead of going to the West Coast. But I still think it could be close, but I'm going to give it to the Seahawks here. So, you leave September, worst you are 1-2, and two, and best you are 1-2 and two as well. I think the Raiders and the Seahawks, at least you don't have to go on the West Coast, but I think they'll still beat you in close games. But that trip to Jacksonville should result in a win. October 1st at Houston to play the Texans. The Texans went 7-1 and one last year. In Houston, they're a really hard team to beat. So worst case scenario, I say you lose this game. Best case scenario, I say you win this game. That defense is really scary, but they don't have a quarterback. We, we have to find out what the quarterback situation is going to be in Houston, how it plays out. So I can still see the Tennessee Titans winning that game, especially if the defense doesn't come out and play that day. Then Mariota is definitely the better quarterback of the two teams. October 8th at Miami to play the Dolphins. I say worst case, best case, that is a win. i just not buying into Jay Cutler. That defense is good, but that offense is, it just, Jay Cutler was bad with the Bears, and he'll be bad with the Dolphins. He's not a good leader. He has some personality issues, so I'm just not buying it. October 16th, home for the Indianapolis Colts. There's a lot of questions, will Andrew Luck even play? That offensive line is still garbage for the Indianapolis Colts. So, worst case, best case, give me the Tennessee Titans in that game. October 22nd at Cleveland. Cleveland is getting better. I think they could possibly win six games this season. But I just don't think they're ready to beat a team like the Titans yet. So give me the Titans over to Brown in Cleveland. And then you have a bye going into November. So best case scenario, you are 5-2. and two. Worst case scenario, you are 4-3 and three going into November. November 5th, Ravens. I say that's a win. Uh, Joe Flacco, who knows if he's going to play all 16 games. I've been saying this. Every time the Ravens show up, who knows about Flacco? That defense is not what it used to be. The Titans are a younger team. I like Harbaugh. I think he's a good head coach, but I'm just unsure of that roster, and I just think the Titans are a better team. But I think it's going to be a close game unless Flacco's not playing. I just don't believe in backup Mallet or the arena football guy or no matter who else they sign. Uh, they should go get Colin Kaepernick if, if Flacco is out for a good hunk of the season. November 12th, home yet again for the Cincinnati Bengals. Worst case scenario, you lose to the Bengals. They've drafted a lot of speed. Andy Dalton is good when nobody else is watching. When it's not a primetime game, he can do pretty good. That's not a far travel for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, but best case scenario, you beat the Bengals. Uh, I think Mariota. I don't know. They're pretty much pretty close. Mariota and Andy Dalton, you can make a case for either one being the better quarterback. November 16th at Pittsburgh to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is going to be maybe the toughest game that the Titans have on the schedule. It's also on prime time. I say that the sadly the Tennessee Titans do not pull it off against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's really hard to play in Pittsburgh, and I just think that Pittsburgh has a slightly better overall team than the Tennessee Titans. November 26th at Indianapolis, I say that's another win. I say that the Tennessee Titans will once again sweep the Indianapolis Colts. There's, like I said, questions at quarterback, that offensive line. There's just a lot of question marks about the Indianapolis Colts. So I will go with the Titans. 
Worst case scenario, going into December, you are six and five. Best case scenario, you are eight and three. And here we go. December, see if the Titans can make a playoff push here. December 3rd, home for the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans are a really tough team. I, I'll give that one to the Titans. Maybe I'll actually swap on out. They'll lose the game to the Titans or the Texans in Houston, but you'll beat the Texans in Tennessee. Two really close games. These games, the Texans versus Titans game, both of them might probably, those two games alone might determine who wins the AFC South. These are going to be really good matchup games, and I expect both of them to be pretty close. December 10th at Arizona to play the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not buying that Larry Fitzgerald and Carson Palmer are going to come back and play at peak form. I think this team is pretty much, especially at quarterback, kind of missed their window of competing for a championship. I think the Cardinals are going to be looking towards the draft to find a new quarterback to lead what is really a good team. Let's be honest, they might have the best running back in the entire NFL. So not taking anything away from the Cardinals. I just I just don't believe that Carson Palmer is going to bring it on. And you need a quarterback. This is a quarterback-driven lead. So a league. So give me the Tennessee Titans over the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. December 17th, another easy NFC West matchup at San Francisco to play the 49ers. I believe the 49ers are on the rebound. I mean, there's only one place to go but up when you only win two games. But I really like Kyle Shanahan. I like their general manager. I think they did a really good job drafting, but they're not ready to beat, which I think the Tennessee Titans are a playoff team or, once again, just barely missing out. And the 49ers don't have the talent on the roster to beat a team that's going to be 500 this season. So give me the Titans in that game as well. And then yet again, a it's a really, it is the tour of the NFC West, the worst of the NFC West, because the day before Christmas, December 24th, you're at home to play the Los Angeles Rams. I say that's another easy, pretty easy win for the, for, uh, for the Tennessee Titans. I say that the Titans have definitely the better team here. Granted, the Rams got the best wide receiver from the Buffalo Bills, but I just don't believe in Jared Goff. I just don't. I think he was a bad pick. I mean, I could be completely wrong here. Only time will say. But definitely, even if Goff has a great season this year, I still think that the Tennessee Titans are going to beat the Rams. They're just the better team here. And you finish off the regular season at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'll, I'll give the Tennessee Titans a win here. I just don't like what Jacksonville has done besides hiring Tom Coughlin. But I think Tom Coughlin should maybe be the head coach, not taking anything away from their current head coach. I think he, he was pretty good with the Buffalo Bills, but I just think Coughlin was better. So best case scenario, the Tennessee Titans go 12-4 and four in 2017. Worst case scenario, the Tennessee Titans go 10-6. and six. My final prediction is 11-5. and five. Uh, Two games against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the game against the Dolphins, two against the Indianapolis Colts, the game against the Browns, the Ravens, the Cardinals, the 49ers, and the Rams represent 10 solid chances at W's. The Tennessee Titans have a pretty easy schedule. I mean, let's go through it. The Raiders are going to be tough. The Seahawks are going to be tough. Those two games against the Texans are going to be tough. And the Steelers, and then, I mean, it just depends how you feel about the Bengals and the Ravens. Uh, if you think the Bengals and the Ravens are so-so, then you only have five tough games. That's why I'll go 11-5. and five. I think you'll probably, well, you might win a few of them. You'll, you know, like I said, any given Sunday, you could lose to the Cleveland Browns up in Cleveland. But I say the Tennessee Titans, once again, 11-5. and five. I like what the Titans have done. I think it's time for Mariota to finally shine and get to the postseason. But once again, 
My name is Corey Foister. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Corey Foister. Follow the show on social media. That is Twitter at Winstreak News, Facebook.com slash The Winstreak, TheWinstreak.com. Leave a review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're listening on. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Soaring Jets Productions. Contact us at either TheWinstreak.com slash contact or Soaring Jets Productions at gmail.com. Join our Fantasy Football League. And our top 10 Super Bowl matchups we want to see is now live. Like I said, I've done 28 of these NFL previews. I'll be done this Sunday if you're listening to it as I upload this on Friday, um, August 18th. It, the NFL season is almost here. Week two of the preseason is underway. It's just amazing. So please... Like I said, if you've never heard of The Win Streak before, check out our weekly wrap-up show. We have a lot of fun stuff planned, me and my co-host, uh, Brandon Myers. We've only we've been doing this now for four months, and it's just been a blast. And I, I appreciate everybody who's listened to me give my predictions for this. So please stay tuned for the final four episodes of this 2017 NFL preview and prediction series. And until next time... Keep winning, everybody, and good luck, Titans. I really believe you're going to shock a lot of people and go pretty far into the playoffs. Good luck.